Welcome to Cable Plus Property, always your number one online educative platform on all issues related to land and landed properties. And as you know, at Cable Plus Property, our aim is to ensure that all Nigerians and non-Nigerians have easy access to every information related to land acquisition, land procurement, building construction, registration, documentation, and obtaining planning permit. In this episode, I'll be speaking with the structural engineer by excellence, a past president of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. He's no other than engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga. Come with me. Is there a way the institution, you know, reaches out to them or tries to collaborate with them? Because we're talking of building collapse that involves everyone here when it virtually happens. Well, I won't say that no way. For example, about two or three years ago, I was invited by them. You know, they have a uh, color than or whatever. I've forgotten the name. You know, the Association for Legal States. They invited me. They have an office in uh, in uh, Utemeta there. I was invited for a discussion. You know, and I discussed with them. I it's on this on this topic too. And then I went there with uh, my books, and uh, I think they bought about uh, ten or twenty copies mm. of that book. You know, I was. They were happy that I came. They, when I enlightened them, they were happy that I, you know, that uh, I point out the areas where they took and because it's had a lot of savings. You see, if you if you if you uh, uh, involve a professional, you actually save me money. Because if the business will come down, you are going to spend money to remove the debris. And all those debris are debris. They are not useful. Mm. Even the iron rock will be twisted in such a way that there is no way you can I'm straighten sure. them and use them. You will spend money to remove all those rubbish. You will not spend money to start the building all over. So you see that uh, it's, it's in your best interest to make sure that uh, because of 10% of overall cost, Mm. You are not losing more than 300 percent because by the time you are starting that building all over, the cost of uh, production you know, in terms of materials, in terms of uh, technology, we have gone higher. Mm. So we are actually doing our best to reach out to everybody. Mm. I mean, the, the advocacy is for the public, including them. Mm. But you see, we cannot be mentioning them because if we do that, it seems as if we are attacking, attacking them. So we can only advocate and they, if they invite us, we go there, we tell them, and they are, that day they were so happy, and I was also was happy. I mean, they quickly said, ah, do you have some of you? I said, yes. You know, and then they bought some, and they, some that uh, this, and I sent some other copies. So if they go through the books and they give to the engineers, even the people that are working with them as paid officers, they go through the book, and they follow the book, then won't be having problems. Mm. Are you also relating with manufacturers and uh, stakeholders involved in the production of construction materials? Because you agree with me that um, some, sometimes substandard construction materials also contribute to building collapse. Well, I am a member of uh, BCPG, that Building Collapse Prevention Guild. I'm one of the chief teams. Oh, one of those people that started. And uh, we have been relating to this group of people because the beauty of uh, bcpg is that it is all the seven professional bodies that form that association the architects the engineers not not less not necessarily structural all the engineers the builder the town planners the council surveyor the sa surveyor and the surveyor without uh, adjective because that's surveyor without adjective that is the, what to call the last surveyors in the record this is you have a uh, you know, this is so they are serious. So the seven of us, because those are the seven professional bodies we have mm. for building in this country, and each of them have their own uh, their regulatory, you no know, regulatory bodies. Okay. So it is seven of us that came up and formed this uh, building collapse prevention guild. So this body has been going around on advocacy. For example, uh, December 12, 2012, we call it 12, 12, 12, December 12, 2012. We gather about 400 masons and the uh, concrete mixers at Alausa, at Beru Hall, you know, for a whole day, and then we give them food, uh, you know, a packed food with uh, moths and water, 
in the afternoon to lecture them on the importance of doing concrete rightly, including the batching, including mixing, including placing. And I delivered uh, some of the lectures and I had to mingle the lectures with both English and Yoruba mm. because the bulk of them are Yorubas. You have few Yubos, so I will speak in English and in English, but then, then go to our local language and speak to them in Yoruba because they contribute a lot you know, to, to the building environment, I mean, to the building and construction, you know. So we have been educating them. We also relate with the Okopaba people, you know, telling them that the, for example, you now take a plank. A plank, um, my father is a carpenter, you know, he was a carpenter. And uh, so right from the youth, I've been following him. So I can actually be say, I can say I'm a total engineer because uh, I'm a, I'm a craftsman, I'm a carpenter, I'm a carpenter's son. And I'm, a, I, and I'm a, you know, a technician because I have ND. I'm a technologist because I have HND. And uh, I'm an engineer because I have a degree. So when you now take a plank, a plank that we know when I was, uh, my father was alive, is 12 feet by one foot. And some special ones are 14 feet by one foot. So especially uh, the one for frames, because a frame is seven feet. So if you want to buy one for frame, you buy that one of 14 feet. So you just cut one into two. But now, the width is about 10 inches, 10 and a half. You can't have 12 inches again. The length is also less than 12. We have uh, been to Okoba several, especially the, uh, their uh, uh, premier president. I mean, a founding president, Kula uh, Wubudu. You have appealed to them, we have you know, said all this to that. Let us do this thing. We have also done the same thing with block making, uh, the block makers too. Mm -hmm. Giving them series of lectures. I remember I was invited to uh, a cartoon cell of a BCPG where we discussed this matter of uh, the president in the, of block makers. In the, they came and they said, look, we agree with you. But by the time we do this uh, thing, based on what you have said, we will say our own is uh, that time, our own is 200. But the people outside are selling 150. So when the clients come and say, okay, how much block? 200. Eh? You can call 150. Ah, they go and buy the mm. 150. So they just discover that following standard, mm. they are losing out Fine. in the market. Mm. And then they will appeal to the government that they should be arresting those people. So you can see that if there's a good collaboration between the man manufacturers as well and the government, you know, a control by the government to punish those who are not living to standard, mm -hmm. it'd be an issue. When I was president, I told, I said, look, I'm president of structural engineers, I said, let everything that is coming out of the rolling mills still, they should give us a certificate. What is the diameter of that uh, distance? What is the strength of that steel? Because it doesn't make sense for you to, you know, give me something. You go to, you pick up a 12 inches rod. I'm sorry, a 12, uh, I mean, a half inch rod. It's supposed to be 12.7 millimeter. They tell you, guy, this one is a half inch, not full. I said, what is the meaning of not full? Is that it is half inch or it is not half inch? By the time you measure it, you will see 10 and a half inches 16 inches i mean uh, 3 uh, 5 8 which is 16 millimeter will be 14 millimeter and the structural engineer has designed that that steel is 16 millimeter but the one they are now using on site mm -hmm. is uh, 14 is 14 so there's no way such building will not come down we look at the structural drawing is perfect look at the concrete is perfect not knowing that uh, the problem is actually in the steel so I presented a, a paper on this matter at the Kurodu cell some years back. They didn't give me a plaque on uh, this thing, you know. I presented the paper and then that's uh, attacking the SON especially, that they are not doing enough. These people that are producing this, this steel will not do that in their own country. Hmm. They won't do that. When you see steel that comes from Ukraine, some of them are 566. But when I started seeing steel straight of 566, I said they don't doctor them. 
Hi Nigerians, they don't doctor them. That is somebody, you know, uh, change the thing instead of uh, four because we're expecting 400, even a little bit less. Now we're talking about 566. But later when you see that this thing continues, uh, it's from Ukraine. Hmm. The diameter, you don't have to tell me that the, this is happened. You don't have to tell me that this is thing it is. Once you look at it, you know, this is full 12, I mean half inch, this is full 5 feet. And uh, by the time you test it, you have 500 and something. By that time, they are working towards Eurocode. Because Eurocode says the state strength should be between 400 and 600. Mm. UK said in our own country it is 500. But they produce between, you know, they produce 566. So anybody that wants to use something more, you know, or something less, you can still use it. So they started that by engraving the diameter. You see that you go to road now, you will see PCL, 12 millimeter. But my dear brother, go and cut that thing and measure it. You will see that that so-called 12 millimeter is about 10.5. Mm -hmm. And they wrote 12 millimeter there. Why can't somebody take them to court? So, sir, a layman on the street believes that the more iron rods you put in the building, the stronger the building the gets, or it guarantees the safety of the building. Is this true at all? It is totally false. If I let's start from a uh, from burglary proof. Some people believe that using a very strong uh, iron rod, like a three quarter or one inch for a burglar proof, is the best. The answer is no. Because all they need to do is to put uh, a bar. Because within the iron rod, the joint is less strong, I mean, is, uh, is weaker than the iron rod. So when they put a bar, the thing will just snap. And that settles it. The two snaps, they will push it, and then, then they enter. Well, if you use a pipe that is not as strong as a rod, the joint is stronger than the pipe. So when you put a bar, the thing will bend instead of, you know. So you need the, you need the saw to cut. And you know, stealing is something you have to do, pa, 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 you don't, and then sawing something make noise. So when we start from that alone, that gives us uh, the answer that, for you to have what you call over reinforcement is a total disaster. If a building is more is reinforced more than necessary, that building will come down without warning. Hmm. Yes, because the the concrete will not be able to get to its own level before it breaks, and it still is still there, you know, waiting. So that is why we call it reinforced concrete. It is the action of the concrete and the steel that makes the entire thing workable. So when one is weak and the other is, uh, is strong, if the concrete is weak and the reinforcement is strong, then you have a catastrophe. Mm. But if, 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 if the, if the uh, concrete is uh, strong and they don't have enough reinforcement, then you will see that you, you have a warning. So what I'm saying in the fact is that over reinforcement leads to a, a disastrous collapse. collapse. Mm -hmm. Compared to under reinforcement, under reinforcement will give you warning that there's a problem. You know the thing will start bending. You see the the beam, the floor, developing pot belly. The thing is coming down. Ah, you be like say there's a problem here. Yeah. But if it is over reinforcement, if there's going to be a disaster, the whole thing just boom. You know, and then you see the iron rod standing. Mm -hmm. All the other concrete, everything scatter. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is dangerous. That is why, for example, this book is, the essence of this book, or this other one, which is on foundation, is to calculate the number of iron rod. The, that is the essence of this whole of these two books. To calculate the number and the size of iron rod you will need in your foundation, you will need in your beam, you will need on your slab, you will need in your staircase. That is the essence of, this, uh, of the whole of this, of this book. You see that all these calculations, at the end of the calculation, you arrive at this one says 12, 13, uh, 33 wide, 12, 0, 1 at 200 center. That is, you need 33 of a half inch bar from here to here. And then from here to here, you need 18 of a of half inch bar at 250. That's at 10 inches centers. So, this, the essence of this book is to be able to calculate the size and the number. So, that is the essence of, uh, of structural engineering. In that was building is concerned.
or even bridges, building bridges, the only solution is, I mean, the only outcome is how many diameter, I mean, how many bar do I need in the structure? What is the size of which one? How do I space them? So once you follow that, then you won't have too much steel and you won't have too little steel. Mm -hmm. We'll go on a short commercial break and we'll be right back. Cable Plus Property, the hub of professionals in the built environment and the number one online educative platform on all issues related to land and landed property. At Cable Plus Property, our aim is to ensure that all Nigerians and non-Nigerians have at the tip of your fingers, free of charge, all information on landed matters. We provide you with all information you need to know about land procurement, land documentation and development, planning permit procurement building construction and so on join us today for free by subscribing to our youtube channel like and follow us on our social media platforms and check us on our website www.cableplusproperty.com together we shall make our environment better spend and build right Welcome back. This is still the Cable Plus Property Show and I'm still talking to engineer Dr. Victor Olusegun Oyenuga. Now, recently, in a bid to minimize building collapse in Ebuti Meta, to be precise, in Lagos State, the government put an order on height restriction of buildings to three floors. Now, what is your take on this as an engineer? What is the implication of this on the economy, the society at large? Well, honestly, I don't understand the meaning of three floors. And I don't think uh, if the area is not a flying zone, there's no reason why an area should be restricted to a certain floor. You know, unless the town planners say, okay, this area we want bungalows, this area we want uh, this thing. You see, at times some of these things were grand. For example, in those days, they said no building in Abuja must be much more, more than 12 floors, 12 story building. Uh, why? Because we don't have enough fire something. Today, you have the World Trade Center there, that's about 25 story building. Mm. No? So, my own advice is that there's no need for us to restrict an area unless the town planner decides to zone that area to, you know, because of beauty and because of some other thing. But if it is not the town planning thing, if it is a matter of a strength, all we need is you want to build 20 story building in a butemata, no problem. Where's your soil report? You see, I continue to tell people that a raft is not a solution to foundation problem. Because most engineers, especially a younger one, who say, ah, you have a bad, oh, you have a bad soil. Ah, no problem. Is a is a go and do raft and the whole thing will be over. The answer is no. The only solution to foundation problem is soil test. And then when I was president of the Institute of Structural Engineers, I laid much emphasis on that. And I think since that year or thereafter, the Lagos government started asking for soil test. All they need in Nebutemeta or anywhere, even including Lawansin, uh, uh, after all, the uh, Federal Secretariat. I was an assistant engineer in the 75, 76 in that place. The two of them were built on top of water. I also have a co-Atlantic that is being built on top of ocean. All we need is, all they need is as a butemeter, let us have the soil test. And the cause of this soil test compared to, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, what do you call it? Engineering to the itself. building uh, cost is so small. So there's no need. We have so many buildings that are four story, five story. Are they going to ask them to cut the uh, two or three story off in order to? Why should the people that are just coming up now mm. suffer that because there are one or two buildings have collapsed? Mm. So I would advise that the government should insist on a soil test to be done by appropriate, uh, uh, you know, uh, appropriate uh, consultants, and then they should be given to a structural engineer to interpret and use for the design of the of the structure. So if it is 20 story building I have money to build in the Butemeta, I shouldn't be restricted. The government should just make sure that I do the needful. It's not uh, it's not the number of stories that bring a building down. 
You have so many buildings that are just up and down that are under collapse. Mm. We want to buy a land somewhere. The man abandoned the place. He had just done the the floor. I mean the building up to deck level. By the time you got there, the building already collapsing. The walls, they are not carrying any load. They are already, you know, giving way. I mean, that's, that's just, uh, the building just up to a bungalow. There's no load, no roof, nothing. Just the walls, they started falling down. So the point I'm making is that it's not the number of story, you know, that uh, matters. The, what matters is the soil test. Let there be a soil test and let there be a foundation design that will be in accordance with that soil test. Mm. So it's not, it's not that uh, once you have a bad area, then go and do the uh, rat foundation. Now, you mentioned soil test earlier and you're mentioning it again. What yes. exactly is soil test and why is it so important? Fine. You have an area. Only God knows what and what is below the ground. We don't know. Okay? We don't know. And uh, so if you have an area and you want to build a house on it, then you engage those civil engineers who have or who have chosen uh, soil engineering as their own profession, just as we have uh, structural engineering. There are some of us that are purely soil engineers, mm. you know, soil engineers. Like I have a friend that we use, he said, right from ND, he has been working with a, a soil fund. Then Baba died and then he bought over to something. He has a, a degree, I mean, he has a PhD now in the uh, in soil, in the soil mechanics. He has been on soil, generally. You ask him to design, he won't have me not be able to do it. Because, I mean, he's, uh, he's purely on soil. So you have some people that are soil engineers. So they will go there, dig some of the soil, depending on, uh, on what we have. Some will have what we call a, a penetrometer test. They just send a rod into the ground. And uh, you know, if the rod is hard, if the soil is hard, it will be difficult for the rod to go. So they will be measuring the resistance of that rod mm -hmm. up to when the soil, when the rod can go more. They call it refuser. Then from there, they will tell you that because of this, oh, this square area of soil, one meter by one meter can carry 200 of kilonewton, 45 kilonewton. And when you say a square area can carry 45, another square area can carry 150. That shows that that one of 45 is poor. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. Aha, because if you put 150 on top of it, the thing will just go down. If you put uh, 45 on top of the one of 150, it will not even know that it's carrying any load. You know. So, and they, they are so good in Zanjo that by the time they get the actual thing, they will divide it by 2.5. Okay? So, that if, for example, the, the, the actual thing is 250, that is, this square meter can carry 250, they will divide the answer by 2.5. And they will have you to use 100. So, that is actually one of the reasons why some buildings are still standing. You know, so, I mean, so that the load they impose on the soil is still less than what the cell can actually cover. Mm -hmm. But the code says that we should use what we call the permissible, which is the 100. One of the buildings that collapsed in, in Lagos, by the time we did the investigation, the man used 550, you know, kilonewton per square meter. By the time the soil test was 330. Mm -hmm. Then somebody came and said, yeah, that building did not collapse. By by foundation, I say yes. But the man used 550 instead of 330, but he didn't carry out any soil test, you know. Because by the I said yes, there's no problem with the co foundation. Why? Because if you multiply 330 by 2.5, that we are by 800 and something. So unless that load is up to that 800, is then you have problem. We assume one of the foundation, the foundation was intact, you know. There's no deformation. It is from there we measure the length and breadth. And then by the time you convert it, we saw that the man used 550. The man, one of our senior came, you know, and said that, they, I said, yes, that building did not collapse because of foundation problem. It collapsed because of another issue. So the point we are making is that there is need for us to do a thorough soil test for any building. And don't say because two 
uh, buildings away. And they, in they the same area. Or and in the same, same area. For example, the uh, this land, what do you call it? Uh, the, before you get to uh, airport by the left, now, is it Antony Village or what do they call them? That that estate in, in front of uh, seven eight after seven eight, we are going to the international airport. That parcel of land, the after is solo. The soil test there is between five and one fifty. That estate. Some of them, some of the soil can carry only five, hmm. whereas some can carry one fifty. So you won't say because of a uh, of uh, you know that ah uh, you guys say uh, something is one fifty therefore. I didn't know guys should also be one fifty. No, even within the same soil, within the same land, we may be walking and discover that we have problems. For example, when we are working on uh, this uh, Apapa jetty for an NPC around nineteen ninety six, we finished the project by two thousand and one. We did the soil test and then we started piling. By the time we got to a particular area, as we sent the pile into the ground, the pile was coming up. We hammer into the ground. The thing we jump up. And we have done all the soil tests. I mean, it's, uh, the, 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 the construction was handled by Trevi, so we are not talking of uh, somebody who doesn't know what he's doing. We have to suspend action, carry out the soil test on that particular location alone. And we discovered that we have a uh, sponge on that. So we have to sponge and then remove all those ones. We have done soil tests in the whole area, but there's no way you can do soil tests in every mm, inch. Every point. Uh -huh, you can't. So that tells you that. Even when you have done your sort you can still come across problem, you know. And uh, as a seasoned and experienced engineer, you have to stop, investigate what the problem is all about. And once you arrive at that, then uh, you can go ahead. So there is no point of, uh, don't say uh, they've done uh, sort test for uh, two plots away, so I can use that for my own. No, it will not work. And two, the cost of soil test is so small. There is no soil test we do that will cost you more than, uh, you know, for a local distance, more than 0.01 percent of the cost of the project. So if somebody can afford one million, a hundred million naira for a project, eh, are we saying that person cannot afford about uh, 200, 250,000? If God bless you that you can pay 100 million, what is 250,000 on top of that 100 million? And that 250,000 will give you enough confidence that this building is safe, whether day or night. And then it will also save you a lot of money. How? I did a project somewhere in the, uh, in the island. And he said, ah, no, 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 no. It has to be, uh, because it is uh, that place, it has to be that foundation. I said, me, I don't believe in that. Though. We did a soil test by foundation engineer and, then, and this was around 86 87 and then foundation said we can use 100 at half a meter we wrote to them if there's a problem will you compensate us they say yes they are ready to stand by what they told us and if i have 100 i only need part foundation so we submitted the soil test and then we did part foundation it's a three story building two suspended floor all the building the building is still standing without any problem and then the cost of a piled foundation is less than 40% or even 30% of the cost of a, of a wrapped foundation. So you can see that I have saved the man because the man spent, uh, you know, one small money. At that time, a rod was about 1,000 naira per ton. You know, the rayon rod we saved alone was more than uh, six tons for the foundation alone. So you can see that by spending a small amount of money, you are not only confident of what you are doing, you will only save money because you will do, your engineer will give you the appropriate foundation for that place. Oh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, sir. I would like you to say something about the Cable Plus property endeavor, this interview and the company itself. Well, I think uh, <laughs> I will say, I think the less I can say that I'm impressed, you know, for an organization like yours. To take it upon themselves to enlighten uh, the, the general public. And then my prayer is that uh, God will give them the ear to listen and the spirit to follow. Mm -hmm. Because if this is done, it's then that you know that you have fulfilled your mission. 
Mm. You know, is uh, so I want to say thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, honestly, I'm impressed and uh, I wish you well. Well, I'm not surprised. I think uh, if you know, some of your people are from my school, oh, oh, that's the College of Technology and then, uh, you know, I continue to tell you that uh, you have only two polytechnics in this country, in fact, in the world. Java College of Tech and others. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you for your thank time, you. Sai. It was great talking to you. Mm. And that was a conversation with engineer Dr. Victor Olushegun Oyenuga, the past president of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. I tell you, I think I can pass on as a structural engineer right now. Do forget to hit the subscribe button below, share this video with friends and family, and also head on to our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram at Cable Plus Property. My name is Oiza. I'll see you next time.